Um, well, a few years ago, I was out for dinner with a friend of mine, and we were talking about a mutual friend. This friend um, had kidney disease and was trying to get a kidney donation. A few people had been tested and had not been, you know, successful donors for her. So it wasn't looking very good at that moment. And my friend said, yeah, um, Monica's starting to fade. So I'm thinking, oh, what can I, what can we do? What can I do? And I don't know, it just hit me. I can be tested to see if I'm a possible donor for her. So I um, texted Monica. I'm allowed to use her name. Monica is a person who is a real, like it, she's with the Kidney Foundation. Everybody knows who Monica is, so that's fine. But anyway, I sent her a text. I said, um, I have O positive blood. I don't know what type you are, but I would like to get tested. And she goes, sure, get in touch with, you know, the transplant coordinator. And she sent me the number. So I called the transplant coordinator and I said, the first thing I must tell you is that I'm 65 years old and I don't know if you guys have an expiry date on kidneys. <laughs> she says, we do not. She goes, the oldest living donor that they've dealt with is 82. And I thought, okay, I guess I'm good to go then. So she explained the process of all the testing and the initial testing to see if you're an initial match. And then there's all kinds of testing to make sure that you're a healthy enough person. And so this went on for quite a while. and. I was really happy after each successful test that I was able to move on to the next one. And uh, like my concern at the time was disappointing Monica. What if, what if at some point they rejected me as a donor and then she would be kind of back to, you know, it would be disappointing for her. But I kept getting through to the next level. Um, so finally, that spring, Monica did get notice that she did have a successful donor, a great match for her. It was her nephew. So they did a, the kidney transplant and, and her nephew was her donor and that worked out very well. And at that point, then things kind of became silent with the transplant center. And I'm thinking, I haven't heard from anybody for a while. Maybe I should give them a call. And I said, I'm still interested in being a donor because what I've learned through this process is how many people in Saskatchewan and across Canada need kidneys, need li live donors. And there's such a, you know, such a waiting list. I said, I want to be a donor to someone. Um, so they continued on with the testing and I, I just kept making it through. It felt like, I don't know, it, it, you know, you just keep getting through to the next level kind of thing. And then at one point we were talking about doing like a paired match or a chain, you know, where you have, um, you get various people involved who are donors and recipients. And I thought, well, that's good because that's a great way to get a lot of people um, kidneys kind of in one turn, if that's a possibility. Um, but the chain broke and that was in September of that year. And I just thought, you know what? I'm not getting any younger here. <laughs> so I said, there are enough people in Saskatchewan who need a kidney. Just find someone who is a match to me. Let's just do this. So they did. And in uh, the, toward the end of 2019, I was an anonymous donor. I guess I want to just thank everybody, everybody involved in the process. That would be all the coordinators, the transplant coordinators, the nephrologists that I've seen, all of the staff, everybody involved with all of it. Um, they have made this such a really positive experience of my own education around the need for organ donation is, you know, it, just much more profound um, so I really I really appreciate being a part of something that might save yet another life along the way